Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to have a conversation with you about your portfolio. So some of you guys have DM'd me asking me to kind of like review, give some feedback on your portfolios. And that's what stems this video because I want you guys to take some things under consideration when you are thinking about what to put in your portfolio, for, you know, as a data analyst. One of the things that I have noticed, and this is not me trying, and this is not me trying to call any one particular person out. This is just in general what I've seen. So if it don't apply, let it fly. But one of the things that I want you guys to think about is copying someone else's projects and putting that in your portfolio, just copying it end to end. So in one of the portfolios that I reviewed, like one of the projects that was in someone's portfolio, I asked them a question like, why did you decide to put this there? Like, why does this chart show this? And the response was, well, I just copied this project from a video I saw on YouTube. You guys, that is a problem. Like if you were interviewing for a job, you can't say that. Yeah, I just copied this YouTuber, so I don't know why they did that. As a data analyst, you have to think a lot about the things that you're doing. And a lot of the times when we are thinking, we're making quick decisions and it doesn't always get verbalized in videos or in comments. Like I remember I myself responded to someone's comment saying, I don't use right joins, I only use left joins, but I didn't explain my reasoning why, which is why I made a follow-up like response video that, hey, this is why I only use left joins for the most part when I'm doing my code in SQL. That like, there's a lot of times where we may miss explaining things to you guys. And unless you're familiar with it, you may not understand why this data analyst made this particular decision to go this route opposed to another route. So that's why I would advise you guys be careful just following someone else's project end to end, unless you understand the reasoning behind those decisions. Because the last thing I'd want for you to do is to get in an interview and you're re having to review this project that's in your portfolio and you can't answer the questions behind the analysis that was completed. Like that just is not a good look. And the other thing I want you guys, like I want you guys to question everything. Like I said but this before, question me, question everything you hear and see. Look, find resources that backs up information that you're seeing. That's what's going to make you a good data analyst. And in addition, things change all the time. So information may not be the most up to date or accurate when you're reviewing things. That's another thing. But also when you are doing your portfolios, I would also advise you guys to be mindful when you are taking classes or courses and they have this end of course portfolio and it's the same project for everyone. So you are not the first person to think, I'm gonna put this on my portfolio in my resume to review if I get it. Like, you're not the only person. Like, if we're all doing the same assignment and we're all putting this on our resume as a project that we've worked on, and when we're getting interviews, it may not be as likely that everyone has the same project, but in the event that you apply for a job that someone else has applied for and y'all both have the same portfolio project, that's gonna look a bit suspicious. And I know there's the argument that, oh, well, yeah, we're doing the same project, but my take on it may be different from your take on it. Granted, I get that, but it doesn't look good when you're both presenting on the same project, unless this is something that they've asked you to do. I mean, like have at it. Because that was one of the things that I had to do in a interview. They just gave me a data set and asked me to review it and analyze it. And so that's totally different outside of the topic. But let's say you took the Google data analytics course there's an end of course project capstone. We all gonna put that on our resume and anytime we apply, the um, hiring managers are seeing the same projects. Like that is questionable, regardless of your take on it being slightly different from someone else's take on it. Like I want you guys to add more to your portfolio. Like use this stuff as a guide. Try to understand the, like the techniques, 
try to understand the reasons why certain decisions are being made, but don't necessarily copy something front to back and put it on your portfolio. That's what I would advise against. And you also have to be able to speak to these projects, like in these decisions that are being made, because that's what they're going to be looking for. Hiring managers want to understand your thought process as to why you made a decision that you made. For example, my manager has been out of the business for a little bit. She, with my director, had made a decision for a particular project that they wanted to go one route. Me coming in new to the project, when I reviewed it, I had a different take on it. I said, I would recommend we doing X, Y, and Z. So when she came back and I explained, oh, we decided to go this route, I had no clue about this prior decision they made of going another way. But I said, we should go X, Y, and Z. I explained why we should go that way. And she was like, you know what? I never thought of it that way. That makes perfect sense why we chose, to, why you chose to go that route. Everyone doesn't have the same perspective and they're gonna wanna understand your reasoning behind certain decisions. So be prepared to be able to speak to that. Another thing with the portfolio is what you put in your portfolio, the end presentation that anyone can review it and grasp the concept of what it is that you're trying to do. In my first interview to become a data analyst, I did not get to present every project that was in my portfolio. The hiring manager, he reviewed that mostly offline. I only got to present one project during that interview time. So I want you guys to look at your presentations, look at your code, look at everything that you have in your portfolio and say, if I were a stranger on the street and I showed this to you, would you understand it? Because let me tell you, you may not be able to review every project in your portfolio during an interview, but that doesn't mean that they're not gonna look at it. And if it's not easy to follow, easy to understand, I they will probably overlook it if it doesn't make sense. Like anyone should be able to pick up and be able to, especially for PowerPoint presentations or a Google slide, it should be easy to follow for anyone, regardless of the topic. We may not all know everything about every topic, but it should be so simple that anyone can review it and understand it without needing you to present this data to them. Because guess what? You may not always have the opportunity, not only in an interview, but in real life scenarios on the job. There have been several decks that I've put together that I thought I'd be able to present and, and just didn't have the opportunity to. So you have to make sure it's simplified so that anyone can review it. Because I remember, y'all remember when I was going through that, like I was stressed out about my, I had to do a readout for my director. So I was presenting to him and someone else on um, our, like under our team was presenting to him as well. That person had a different take on what I had. So I had a chart that was very simplified. I thought it was easy to follow for anyone to grasp. And this other person on our team, they went about it doing a statistical analysis. And when we did the presentation to our director, he liked the take of the statistical analysis. Okay, great, got it. He went and presented that to our SVPs, right? And guess what he wanted? The dumb down simplified chart because like everybody isn't gonna understand all this complex, like they had bots and whisker plots and stuff. Like, like there's a time and a place for that, but I just didn't think that was the place for it. Just give them a simplified view of what it is. And it had to be changed. We had to work to change what it was that was being presented because that was just not di easily digestible for your average person. So just be mindful of that. You may not always get to present this data to everyone that's going to be reviewing it and they need to be able to understand it. So, okay, I just need to add this in, you guys. When you are creating your PowerPoint presentation, another thing you want to be mindful of is that Go back to your summary slide where you're telling them what your analysis is going to do. Review that summary of your analysis, which is usually like your second slide. Review that after you've filled out your entire deck. Review it to make sure you said you're gonna like do what you explained. Like your analysis is going to accomplish X. Like I'm gonna show you how to do X, Y, and Z. Like if I'm gonna show you 
why you should go this route as far as, let's say, with a financial decision, I want you to pick this bank over another bank, okay? And in my presentation, I'm going to explain all the benefits and all the reasons why you're going, I want you to choose this particular bank A over bank B. You need to do that in your presentation. You need to tell me how I get to this decision. Don't give me all the little crumbs that lead up, but I can't make a decision based, like I should be able to come to a hard conclusion that, yes, I should be choosing bank A over bank B. You are you should be giving me the pros and cons, giving me the financials, giving me everything I need to make an, a data-driven decision, okay? I should not leave this presentation more confused than when I entered it, okay? I shouldn't. If you tell me at the end, I'm going to be able to pick bank A, I should be picking bank A at the end of this presentation. I should not be like, there may be questions I have, but your data should back up. This is why you should choose this. Does that make sense? I hope it does. That's just my thoughts, you know, just a random person on the internet. I am not telling you guys what to do. I just want you guys to have the best shot at getting a job for those of you that are looking at becoming a data analyst. And these are just some of the things that I'm worried about when I look at, you know, your portfolio. I'm concerned and I've brought this up to several people, but I hope this kind of like hits home for you. Like, because I don't know if y'all read, like when, when I, when I, <laughs> when I respond back with feedback, like I know I have chapters. Okay. So I don't know that y'all are reading all of that, but hopefully you're listening to me when I say like, look, I'm concerned about X, Y, and Z. Why are you doing this? You need to simplify this. Like I, I am that, I'm like your audience. I'm, I'm wanting to give you feedback to help you. But like, I, I just, as someone who's been doing this for some, like a few years, like I just want to give you guys helpful feedback, constructive feedback that I hope will help you. And I'm sorry about the long chapters that I write back. You guys are probably ignoring it. I, I get it. So hopefully this video was helpful. Please give me your feedback. And if you're in a position where you're a hiring manager, let me know, does this make sense? Like, am I just out here on an island on my own? So yeah, just let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please comment below, subscribe. I will see you in my next video.